What I have on the bench here is uh, a couple of different versions of the 350 camshaft along with a 350 rocker arm and the 350 rocker arm shaft. Just to, for sake of clarity and detail, uh, in the back here, this is what we call the early style fat cam. And we call it the fat cam because the center area here is, is pretty thick. In front of it, this is the later style thin cam. Uh, it doesn't matter this, the process applies either way. We're going to look at this, the uh, thin cam for now on, on, our, uh, on our bike. In fact, I'm actually going to put the cam aside. And we're going to talk about not just the rocker arm. We're going to talk about this rocker shaft here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the rocker shaft up facing, facing the end of the camera there. Can you, you guys see it? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to turn the shaft here and you're going to see that the shaft is actually eccentric, meaning that it is not, uh, this part of the shaft is not on center with this part of the shaft. Uh, and actually it's a little more visible if I roll it. So the shaft is eccentric. And the way the adjustment process works on the 350 is uh, you actually end up turning the shaft via this uh, there's a little screw on the end here, the flathead which you can access from the left and right side of the motor. And as you turn the shaft, what happens is you change the position of the rocker arm. Now, later style rocker arms like, like this one here, like that's off a of 360, actually has a little nut and screw at the end of it that you would adjust in and out to take up the slack of the system. Much better design, but that was a later idea. On the 350s, we are literally, literally moving the position of the rocker arm front to back and then setting the clearance at the tip here, between the tip of the rocker and what will be the valve stem right here. Just trying to give you an idea of what's happening on the engine here. And because the shaft is eccentric, there's two places it can adjust to. It can adjust in position one way like this, and the other way like this, and still be out of position. Again, we'll show you on the cylinder head. It's important to notate here on the end of the shaft this uh, slotted screwdriver mark and uh, this little tiny tick mark we have to one side of it. This is a reference orientation mark that's going to be important when you're setting the valves. So uh, make sure you, you can visually see that on your rocker shaft when we go to adjust. So let's look at a cylinder head with the camshaft installed and we'll show you how the, how the motion works. So what we have here is an old 350 cylinder head and cam box. Uh, we don't have a camshaft installed, but I do have one rocker arm here installed on the rocker shaft, and it is in fact touching a the tip of a valve as if it was to open. But I'm, all I want to do is show you how this rocker arm moves with the adjuster. I'm just going to keep a little bit of pressure on it with my thumb here and turn the adjuster shaft, and you're going to see how the rocker arm kind of wiggles up and wiggles down. Now that is where you adjust your clearance at, is by setting the wiggle so far, put the feeder gauge in between the tip of the rocker arm and the top of the valve. So we're going to come in here like that, and then when we set the, set the distance and then do the feeder gauge like we would a feeder gauge. But I wanted to show you how this rocker arm is actually moving so it makes sense during the adjustment. We're going to throw a camshaft in here real quick, the other rock arms, and actually show you the adjustment in more detail. I went ahead and put the camshaft in and kind of changed the camera view. So you can see we've got two rock arms. You've got this one and this one. And that's, that's pretty loose. You can see that that rock arm is moving quite a bit here, and this one's moving quite a bit here. We come back over and look at our rocker shafts. Uh, we pointed out the detail about the tick mark on the end of the shaft. So here's our tick mark here, and then we have another one with the tick mark up here. So when we are adjusting these, there's two positions they can be in. They can either be adjusted where we're turning, we're turning it and we're taking the slack out of it. So you have no more slack here. I loosen it. And as I turn it, now we're tightening up the slack and ideally we'd have a feeler gauge in at the, the rocker arm right there. But 
you see how this the, the tick mark is facing towards the spark plug. The spark plug would be a, a theoretical like center line here, right, coming vertical through the engine. We don't want that. We want to make sure it's facing away from the, uh, the spark plug. So I can rotate this 180 degrees or so and get the same result. Again, that's because it's on an eccentric. It has two spots where it could potentially touch as it rotates. That's where I want it. This is kind of facing, I don't know, maybe a, a 4 o'clock position. And over here, it's going to be facing kind of closer to like a 7 o'clock position. If I get it right, so you can feel it touch right there. Taking up the, taking up the slack right there. So it's important to make sure the tick marks face away from the spark plug. Now the engine will run and they face towards the spark plug, but what you're essentially doing is moving the position of the rocker arm. This changes the geometry of the rocker arm, which reduces lift and duration of the camshaft, and the bike will run, it just won't rev as hard. That's an easy way to detune a 350 engine. And I think this is part of the issue why Honda got away from this design. So we're going to go into more detail about um, actually setting the, setting the uh, the adjustment here, we're going to do it on, on this guy right here. So we're going to bring the camera down so you can see the tip of the valve and actually make the adjustment. So I went ahead and loosened this rocker arm up as far as it'll go. And you can kind of see how uh, the tip of the rocker arm here is touching the tip of the valve. And that's where we're going to make our adjustment. So I have a peeler gauge here and that would go between the tip of the valve and the tip of the rocker arm just like that. Next, I'm going to take my screwdriver to my rocker shaft. I'm going to turn it with the tick mark facing away from the spark plug. So I just feel it start to bind to where I can feel it touch. And now I've got a good feel the gauges kind of stuck in there. That's exactly where I want it to be. My last step would be to, to tighten up the, the lock nut that holds this in place. So, hold the screwdriver here. And then come in and tighten the lock nut down on the bike. Take out the pier gauge, and then that should be enough clearance to the valve there. We've got a little bit of play, but not a lot of vertical. You can actually hear it right there. So I hope this kind of sheds a little more light on the architecture of the, of the valve rocker arm mechanism in the 350 engine. Let's actually make the adjustment on the bike and uh, wrap this up.